jealousy is a sin. And I know that when we hear sin, we hear like, oh, like sin, like you're so like judgmental. But to be honest, sin is anything that's destructive. And jealousy is by far extremely destructive, not only to you, but also to the people that you are jealous of. <laughs> The devil hates you. He doesn't want you to live the abundant life that the Bible says Jesus died for you to have. That doesn't just mean carry your soul to hell. That means that when you're in this life, he wants you to be as miserable, frustrated, depressed, sad, and low self-esteemed as possible. So jealousy is that spirit to do that. Jealousy will drive people to put other people down to uplift themselves. And that was never how God intended for us to live abundantly because God said, I will only uplift the humble. And jealousy is not humble. Jealousy is a prideful thing. Now, on that note, there is another verse and I'm going to read it. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. In other words, every single human being that ever lived, that lives now and will ever live in the future, struggles and faces jealousy. And that right there will give you freedom because you keep thinking you're the only one having these thoughts. You keep thinking you're the only one who wants to be prettier. And it's not that you think, oh, well, I'm the only one in the world who wants to be prettier, but it's like those moments where we are just so delved into that motion of jealousy and envy is those moments where we feel so isolated from the world. It's those moments where we feel so like I'm the only one, you know? And then we look at the pictures of other people smiling on Facebook and Instagram, enjoying their life, but we don't know that half the time when they do that, right after that picture is taken, they probably went on Instagram and did the very same thing, looking at other people enjoying their lives. And then that's what further motivates them to take more pictures of them enjoying their lives. It's like this continuous cycle of just chasing after the wind. In the Bible, in Ecclesiastes, I believe it's four verse four, I'm looking down on my notes, so that's where, yeah. It says, and I saw that all toil and all achievement spring from one person's envy of another. Ecclesiastes 4 verse 4. He saw that people's toil, the hard work that they were doing, the effort they were putting in their life, as well as their achievement, what they were getting out of it, it was all springing just from one person's envy of another. And if you think about it, that is exactly how we live. Many of us we're jealous over someone's success, and so we push ourselves to achieve that success so that one, we can satisfy that desire to be in that position, and two, people can look up at us and, and admire us and respect that from us and want to be like us. He said, this too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. It is absolutely meaningless. And then it says, and God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. When we start to feel negative feelings like anger and jealousy, especially when we decided to kind of live and pursue God, we immediately condemn ourselves. Oh, you're not moving fast enough. You're not progressing fast enough. You're still a sinful person. Why are you feeling this way? You shouldn't be feeling this way. You know better than this. We condemn ourselves because these feelings come. But God is saying, just because you feel something, you don't have to be it. When you feel jealous, guys, and when you feel envious, that's not a sin. Stop condemning yourself for that. That is natural to mankind, and it will always be. But it's when you choose to act on it. It's when you allow it to influence your decisions. It's when you allow it to control your life. It's when you allow it to dictate how you will treat the person that you're jealous of. Because oftentimes, we mistreat the person we're jealous of. And how do we do that? You ever watch LMN where the lady is so obsessed with having a baby because she can't have a baby and then she like goes to the hospital and just steals someone's child or sometimes there is this person who is just so envious of someone else's relationship that they just want the husband so bad or they want the wife so bad and so what they do is they seduce the person's partner to try and just break up that family because that's what they want and they get so obsessed they say if, if I can't have you no one can you know the Bible says wrath is cruel Anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? And nothing and no one is a match for jealousy except the Holy Spirit. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. When you think of something that rots, you, th you think of something that lingers. It's there over a prolonged period of time. And slowly and gradually, it just begins to like almost fest away the life of something. And that's exactly what jealousy does to us. 
when jealousy isn't addressed in your heart and jealousy sits there and it lingers over time, don't you find that you get more and more annoyed when you see that person? Don't you find that you get more and more resentful, more and more bitter? Don't you find that when your boyfriend or your girlfriend isn't making you feel loved and appreciated and they continue to cheat or they continue to give other girls or other guys attention, that that just gets you more and more and more until you become so obsessed and so upset that you're ready to hurt them, that you're ready to hurt the girl? Isn't that what you find? And that's why jealousy is destructive. That's why jealousy and envy is a sin. That's why it's so hidden. And that's why the enemy doesn't want you to be aware of it because it's that destructive. James 3.14 says, For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Jealousy is like a drug. It's like you have to you have to continuously feed it. Most oftentimes, it's not as extreme as stealing someone's baby or seducing someone's partner. Sometimes it's as simple and common as being relieved and being happy when you hear bad news about the person who you're jealous of. You kind of sit there like, wow, that's good then. So that means it's all good. Like no one, not everyone really loves her. You know, not everyone really loves him. You know, or sometimes it's when we're the ones actually facilitating that gossip. When we're the ones who want to see that person fall. And so we'll whisper in people's ears and we'll be like, oh, well, you know, did you, can you believe that she did this? Could you believe that he did that? Oh, man, she's just so fake and she's so this and she thinks she's cute, but she ain't cute. Da -da 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 -da. Ain't no one into her. Da -da -da -da. She knows she only do it up because of this. Da -da -da -da. Those are the subtle ways that jealousy will creep in your life. And the more it sits and the more it lingers on your heart, the more it will rot away the very life of you. And not just you, but the very life of the person because that's the goal of jealousy. The Bible says the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That spirit of jealousy is not just there to kill you and to steal from you and to destroy the good in your life. But in doing that, it's almost like a suicide bomb. It kills those around you. In Proverbs 4 to 7, wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. With jealousy and envy, we're pursuing riches, we're pursuing honor, we're pursuing attention, we're pursuing peace, we're pursuing this thing to fill us and satisfy us and make us feel finally complete. And it never works because it never happens. We never feel complete. We never feel satisfied. We just want more and more and more. The Bible is literally telling you wisdom is the principal thing. With all thy getting, get understanding. It's telling you Long life is in her hands. Riches and honor hair, pleasantness and peace hair. That's why the Bible says you have to renew your mind daily and you have to use the sword, which is the word of God, as your weapon in this spiritual war because we are in a spiritual battle. Jealousy and pride, that will lead you to a path to destruction where you won't ever succeed at anything. And you may look like you succeed, you may have the car, the riches, the glory, the honor, the popularity, but you're never happy, you're never satisfied. And there are thousands of people like that. But can you imagine, do you know what those people who have nothing but they're just content? Those people who they're experiencing one of the most difficult parts of their life, but they're content. Because, and they always say, God, I got God, I'm good. And that always confuses people who aren't Christian because they're like, how can you be going through this real thing in your life and be so content and at peace saying that you have God, someone you can't see? And that's, we can, the only thing us Christians have to tell them is, that's just how it is, that's just life, that's just my truth. I'm the best. I'm the best.